Hi everyone, welcome back to our podcast. Today we are talking about One Kings. I'm joined by Alice and Chris. Join us for the conversation. Hey guys. Hey. One Kings. One Should we Kings. Should talk about it? How has your week been? Are you having a good one? Yeah, I'm having a good week. Any yeah. highlights? Um, I played football last night. Did you? Yeah, it was good fun. I didn't know that was a thing you did. Yeah. Very Etty good. was one of the star players of what was the youth girls KCC team. Who like reigned supreme yeah. for a number of years. Three years. Three not years not to get into specifics, but it was. But how once. much was that, <laughs> Lily? Oh, uh, I it's like a team effort. There's no I in team. There is no I in team. But there is in win. But so, <laughs> you never know. Which we did three times. <laughs> <laughs> but Essie, this is your first appearance on the podcast, so you are so very welcome. Thank yeah. you. It is good to have you. And to pick on you, to begin with, mm. how do you best read the Bible? Is it a time that you set aside every mm. day? Or is it just when you can find 10 minutes, like, and that's different every day? Or what's your... Best no, reason. that's a good question. Um, I think when I was younger, I just thought it was really difficult. And I think I sort of railed against the idea of setting time aside because I thought, that's religion. No, don't need to do that. Um, but then obviously it's actually quite helpful to set aside <laughs> time to read your Bible. And I remember being in later youth and thinking uh, Bible plans were very intimidating to me especially the ones that had the dates on them, because mm. then if you skip today, you were like, the dates are all wrong now. I failed. I failed. Mm. Um, so what I just found helpful for me is just to pick a book and just try and commit to reading a chapter a day. If you miss a day, you don't need to catch up. Just the next day, you still just read a chapter. And I think actually that's helped me get through so much with the Bible, just mm. reading one chapter a day, really simply being like, what do I learn from God from this? Mm. Um, and what does that teach me about me, myself? and I <laughs> um, but yeah that's been really helpful for me especially in the Old Testament where it can be really confusing but just committing to one chapter a day regularly mm. um, and then after a while reading one chapter isn't actually that long and then you're like oh maybe I read two chapters brilliant but uh, yeah <laughs> yeah and obviously we're on this kind of mammoth journey as a church where we try yeah. and well we're not trying we are doing where we're getting through <laughs> all of it from start to finish we've and got through quite a lot yeah we're doing we're doing yeah. well still with it and as part of it these podcasts are kind of intended that we get into a bit of discussion and I don't know anything that cropped up in your reading or from a preach on Sunday and I don't know one thing that we were talking about just before was yeah. that's actually come up a few times through the Old Testament so far is just the call to obedience mm. in, in terms of what what is following Yahweh God mm. Um, in his perfection how he's mm. um, made everything in the beginning and called us to be his people what mm. does a life of obedience as opposed to what we often see in, in his people being when they disobey or get yeah. it wrong um, I don't know what do you pull out from One Kings in terms mm. of a life of obedience mm. well I mean like the most obvious for me the most obvious obvious character um, who models obedience so well is Elijah um, you know he is called by God to go and speak to Ahab, this awful king, um, like the lowest of the lows. There's something like 32 kings that are bad in mm. one and two kings, and he's pretty bad. Um, <laughs> and Elijah's called to go and like speak God's word into a culture that Ahab has created that is about greed and power and like killing people and not not of God. And, to, and so Elijah walks into that in knowing that he's been called by God um and stands firm like speaks truth trusts God remains faithful um and I think I know our context and our culture isn't isn't you know we're not under the rule of King ha King Ahab but actually the the call upon our lives is still to be obedient to God and I think mm. he models that so well and I don't know I think sometimes we can think that um, with God things will always end they ultimately will all end well but like in the everyday situations we can think oh well God will work it, work that out and it will be you know have a happy ending and sometimes we focus so much on the ending and the outcome that we forget that, that what God, God actually calls us to is mm. obedience and he doesn't he works out the the outcome that's not in our control mm. that's not in our you know that's not our responsibility the responsibility is matter of the heart and matter of are we following god are we standing firm in like the truth of what he says um and living for him even when it's difficult and even when it's hard mm. and i think elijah really models that well because you know ahab doesn't change you think about what john was preaching through on um on sunday with the 
the two altars and one to Baal, one mm. to the true God and, and the true God answers by fire. And you think Ahab should have changed. She should have seen that God is real and it should be the happy ending that he leads the people of, mm. of God back to, to living for him. And he doesn't like yeah, yeah. three chapters later, he kills a man, steals his vineyard. And you think, well, what was the point of that? Mm. Like, why did that whole thing happen? But actually it happened because God calls us to be obedient not mm. to be successful like he calls us to live for him mm. and to honor him in all that we do and he works out the rest yeah which in it like to live a life of obedience is it is hugely like mm. countercultural because yeah. it's like to obey is almost like a like a dirty word in our culture yeah. people people yeah hate being told it's to like obey. restrictive yeah it's, it's and it's not it's, yeah i think especially in younger generations mm. like the, the idea that you're just meant to obey because somebody's told you to do mm. something everything in you wants to mm. like rise up against that well, but i don't want to and mm. like i remember hearing it was a couple of years ago when um you know like the five different love languages oh yeah were being talked about and it's like how do you express love how do you mm. receive love i remember hearing somebody talk in a church setting saying um read what jesus says what what would jesus's love language be and i don't know whether we can put the love of god into a box like that mm. but jesus said if you love me keep my commandments mm, yeah. so if you love me obey and I was mm. like whoa that's not how we identify yeah, with, with love yeah, or, yeah. or it, yeah, like yeah. obedience is such a countercultural mm, thing yeah. that it's, re- it's actually a really powerful mm. yeah. witness isn't it yeah and I think in one and two kings one of the things you see just again and again is that you have a lot of bad kings and then you also have a lot of kings you start off well and then they mm. sort of crash and burn at the end mm. um not completely crash and burn but um i just found that so challenging in the sense of like obedience isn't just like okay god like i've done this many things for you now i can sort of slack off actually a life of obedience Mm. is actually right until the very end deciding Mm. to put god first deciding to do um what he says and most of the king's downfalls are not big decisions they're little things of um marrying foreign women and letting their gods creep in slowly yeah most of the disobedience starts really small yeah and actually there's such a lesson in these books of like you need to be so vigilant mm-hmm. about the decisions you're making and um why it may seem like oh i'm not being disobedient mm-hmm. like how where does that road lead to mm-hmm. of um ultimately being disobedient mm-hmm. um and it's, yeah it's like little holes in a ship isn't it you think it's only tiny yeah. but actually over time the water comes in and you find yourself sinking and like oh yeah, no this yeah. is way more serious than i first thought mm. that this would be yeah and like actually there's a yeah something really powerful in that of like it's an everyday thing mm. it's yeah. not just that when you make a commitment or you know it is every day of your life waking up god i'm gonna live for you today yeah, yeah. holy spirit help me change me help me you know be more like you um mm. And live like a life of obedience mm. um, that honours and glorifies who God is. Yeah. So what are you? I'm gonna put you on the spot again, Eddie. Like, what <laughs> are you doing? And so, given that narrative of we often see people who might start well and then mm. it kind of the wheels come off and it all goes wrong. Yeah. What are you doing now, as someone in your twenties? Like, what are you investing in in the mm. present to set you up for the long haul that yeah, actually yeah. in decades to come you're going to be running the race and living a life <laughs> obedience to god nice easy question well, thanks Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um no i think it's good and i think um i think so often the habits that you're forming in mm. your 20s are the ones that you're going to carry on with um mm. for a long time um and i think just like what is your foundation currently like we were we were talking earlier about mm. how um how culture is just changing every six months there's Mm. new there's new fads there's new truth Mm. there's new um things like that and actually unless you are continuously coming back and being like what does god's word say about this what does god's word say about me about my future what does god say about what like what he was calling me to do Mm. um and i think ultimately it's just this book is never going to change god's Mm. word is never going to change and if you can get that now of like actually every decision that i'm making i'm going to like stand up against god's word and um also just spending lots of time learning to hear his voice um because mm. i'm i remember finding it really hard when people would be like oh god said this to me god said this to me and i'd be like well i just can't, can't stop my brain just wanders off and actually being taught from a young age actually to hear god's voice is something you need to invest time in you need yeah. to learn what it sounds like learn how he speaks to you and yeah. i feel like i'm at a point where um he'll speak to me in a very specific way that if i tell the people they're like that's weird but i know that it's god because we spent the time learning his voice mm. um and actually they're the things that when i'm old 
older and I have a family or whatever that um yeah like diving into God's word and hearing his voice they're the things mm. that are gonna um hopefully keep me on track yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. finish the race well yeah that's <laughs> yeah yeah that's really cool very cool and I guess even in talking about hearing God's voice mm. like we've already you've already, we've already talked about how what we're seeing now at this part of the Bible narrative is God establishing and raising up prophets yeah. and mm. people who are kind of the mouthpiece of God mm. to speak the voice of God into a mm. into a scenario a situation yeah. a people group mm. um, obviously this side of this side of the New Testament now mm. that the Holy Spirit has been poured out on, on God's people Paul says doesn't he, that he longs that all of us would yeah, prophesy yeah. and obviously there's an, obe- there's an obedience step in mm. that as well mm. isn't it Some, I don't know mm. have you got any examples or stories of when you felt like God has given you a really clear word mm. for, for someone that it's taken you a bit of courage to be obedient to that and to step out and share that mm. <laughs> uh, yeah one um, one was I was at a prayer meeting in um at New Day, um, like the day before all the young people arrived and I saw this girl um, and I kind of knew of her, didn't really know anything about her um, and I had this um, picture of um, like a new field and her climbing through a, a fence um, to to get into this new field and the field that she was coming from was dry and like the, the, the flowers in there were dying and um, the field that she was going into was full of like vibrant colour and these beautiful flowers and um I didn't really know what that meant but I had like this real like panging in my heart of like you need to go and speak to her you need Mm. to go and tell her I was like god like she's not even from my church Mm. like I don't even I can't even really (laughs) remember if her name is the right one I'm Mm. thinking like this is going to be so embarrassing if this all just goes (laughs) wrong and um I went up to her and I just said, this is so bizarre. I think I know of you. Um, but um, God's just been giving, giving me this picture that I think is for you. And I shared with her the picture. Um, and she was like, "This." she just started to cry. And she was like, this is so crazy. Um, I've just found out that um, I'm not allowed to continue my course at university. And I've been told I have to drop out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just thinking about like, what is next? Like, God, why have you abandoned me? Why is like, why this is the thing I feel you've called me to um, and she uh, is a nurse she was a nurse she was training to be a nurse and she was like this is what I feel God has called me to do and I just don't know how that's all going to work out um, but this is so encouraging thank mm. you and she like prayed into it and then she um, messaged me and said um, a few weeks after New Day and said I found out I've I've got into another course um, and now she is serving on a, a mercy ship around the world wow. using nursing and I'm not saying that any of that is to do with me, but like just that <laughs> I, for me, I find it so encouraging mm. that. And she even messaged me a couple of weeks ago saying like, thank you so much. That was such a key moment wow. in my mm. journey with God. And I was just like, that is so crazy. Like mm. I didn't even know her name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and yet God's like, yeah, yeah, really, really cool. Yeah. I think it's amazing that like I a hundred percent agree with what Etty says that we have the word of God yeah. that is that's a, like if God never said anything again we have everything we need yeah, in absolutely. what's written in the word of God yeah. and yet we also have a God who chooses yeah. to speak to us today yeah. and we get to hear from him yeah, I don't yeah. know you're someone who hears from God Etty I am yeah. sorry <laughs> come on give us a story <laughs> I actually yeah I have a story but it's a slightly different story so um I I was at an 1830s event and I had a word for someone about something that they'd injured and I went to tell them and they basically were like no not me yeah. and I was like cool okay <laughs> <laughs> and I remember going back to my little space and I was like hey, that was interesting God like because I'd really psyched myself up and I and I, I do feel like I hear from God so I was a bit like oh I got it wrong okay and then I was praying about it and I was like that's a bit oh okay I'm like, I was a bit like have I, have I lost it like what is it <laughs> I've lost my oh, touch yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then actually um, an older friend of mine then came over and was like I have a word of you and I was a bit like oh gosh you do um, and then she had given me this picture of actually God um, was challenging me in the sense of um, I'm very I like to be in control I'm a very ordered person very like keep things like you know in order and um she said that she'd seen this um like big tangle of like wool um and god was trying to say to me like actually there's beauty in like the mess and there's beauty in like Mm -hmm. the um in like the failures and um and it was just actually just perfect timing and then i was praying into that and i just really felt god speaking to me about like actually like kind of what we were saying is actually the step of faith of me going to speak Mm -hmm. to that someone that is that is the faith in that Mm -hmm. that's not the um it wasn't whether this person was like, oh yeah, and then they got miraculously healed. It was actually just about me in that moment, um, 
God spoke and I was obedient. And mm-hmm. actually, that doesn't mean I failed. Like, obviously, it was a bit weird walking back to my space afterwards. But, like, ultimately, like, in the kingdom of heaven, like, I listened to him. Mm-hmm. And then also, he then spoke to me through someone else. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, that's um, really cool. Yeah, and the Bible even talks about, like, when you get a word, like, way up against the Bible, is it true, is it not? And, mm-hmm. um, and I think, yeah, like God, the only, like you're saying, the only thing God calls us to do is to is to trust Him and mm. to be obedient in mm-hmm. Him. Um, yeah, so it's like. And there's so much wisdom, isn't there? Like we could have said it before when we were talking about how do you set yourself up for the long haul. Like mm. we would sit here as three relatively young. I'd still count myself in that. Category. You are young, <laughs> <laughs> but there's so much wisdom in. Um, older counsel from Absolutely. people who have walked the journey yeah. already and yeah, see things from another perspective and can help shape us yeah. and there's um we do ourselves no no good by thinking that we know it all and actually mm. there's so much wisdom to be Absolutely. had from generations who are older than us and yeah. actually that's true for, for everyone at every stage yeah. actually yeah. who's who do you have who's speaking into your life who's yeah. helping shape mm-hmm. you um, mm. and walk this journey of obedience that we're all mm. called to that can be difficult at times yeah, but yeah. we all need help in that don't we yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. i'd also just say in that and um i think when you are a bit younger like you have the sort of like the bible talks about child life fa- like childlike faith and i like to extend that to like still us um, <laughs> because because when you're like this age that you have you have so much less responsibility you have so much more like like childlike faith of just the complete and utter dependency on god and mm. and almost a free a f- more freedom in that and mm. i've recently felt challenged of like actually am i like am i using like this childlike faith of like realistically i've not had to go through much hardship up until this mm. point and like actually like am i doing that thing of just blindly trusting the creator of the universe mm. um and like stepping out and doing outrageous things because you can mm. and like actually like growing that um just can utter dependency on god now like again mm. that's what's gonna like don't wait until you're older and be like mm. oh i'm really wise now and now i can go and give people words but actually like use a bit of like make mistakes and like actually go and give that person the word it might mm. be wrong but like actually you've stepped out and you've been obedient and you've learned something from that mm. um mm. yeah that's cool really cool i guess elijah does that with elisha doesn't he Mm. passes it on yeah. says have a, have a double portion like mm. a double portion of my <laughs> blessing of oh, God's blessing um, <laughs> it's kind of cool mm. we hope you enjoyed hearing about um, some stories we'd love to hear stories of when you've stepped out in obedience so why not comment below we'll see you next week for Two Kings